I'm exploring one of the biggest and most ambitious engineering projects Europe has ever seen. Well, actually can't see, because it's happening two kilometers under the Alps. Boring the longest rail tunnel in the world involves some enormous industrial engineering using enormous machinery. But it also creates an enormous and rather messy problem. It's estimated that this project will generate 21 million cubic metres of rubble, which is hard to get your head round. Put it this way, that's enough to turn an area the size of Greater London into a gravel driveway one centimetre thick and still have enough left to do half of New York City. So what do they do with that amount of rubble? The answer is cut a massive cavern out of the rock and build the world's biggest purpose-made subterranean cement factory. This place is huge. Every day, hundreds of tonnes of rubble are transported along 40 kilometres of conveyor belt here to be turned into cement. This is a perfect piece of recycling. Excavate rock to make tunnels, bring those rocks to a processing plant underground, and turn it into concrete to line those tunnels. Everybody wins. But cement only uses 25% of all the rubble. So where does the rest go? To find out, I've been given a load of rubble, a massive truck, and a mission to go back up to the surface and get rid of it. I'm doing this on my own. There isn't a driver in here who's worried I might crash his truck. <laughs> there is. Uh, right, power. It works. Drive the big truck. <laughs> Ooh, this looks narrow. It's OK. It's all right. Are you sure? Every single day, a fleet of mega trucks like this one make 140 journeys up to the surface, carrying in total 3,500 tonnes of tunnel trash. That's rubble the weight of a Statue of Liberty every week. There might be a whole series in this. Welcome, you just joined me on Underground Truckers. I'm hundreds of metres beneath the Alps. Everywhere. Along all of these tunnels down here, you see these huge plastic tubes there for ventilation. And there are pumps dotted about, pushing huge volumes of air down them. And it's a good job they are, because without that air, there wouldn't be enough oxygen down here to keep us alive. Oh, there it is. The light at the end of the tunnel. Dawn of a new day and the start of a new segment in this show. Left or right? This is the Podasta Valley, Austria. And right now, it's not looking its best, because it's currently the biggest dumping ground in all of Europe. Over half of all the rubble generated from this stretch of tunnel is being tipped here. And just look at it. What would Julie Andrews say? I'm hoping that my best friend Michael has got some answers. And this is where all the rubble comes? Yeah, all the material out of the tunnels will be stored here. And there's a lot of them? It's in total more than 7 million cubic metres of material. And you can't just dump it in a van? Exactly. It's not allowed to dump material. So if you can't just dump it, what do you do with enough tunnel rubbish to build seven Empire State buildings? Michael is a man with a very big plan. This natural V-shaped valley is slowly being transformed into a U-shape. The engineers are depositing rubble onto the valley floor in thin 60 centimeter compacted layers. It's going to take 10 years to build it up, landscape it, reroute rivers, and reintroduce native plants and wildlife. You're looking at the biggest garden makeover in history. So this is gardening 
on a geological scale. How high is it going to be? Where, where would we be when it's finished? Uh, around 140 meters higher than what you can see now. Oh, it's gigantic. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's up there somewhere. Exactly. One of the biggest issues is uh, infiltration of water, so because you could create a big landslide. That's the next uh, town, a very small town, so... They'd be very cross. Yeah. So how do you stop it going down there? We have a very huge drainage system uh, containing all the water, which, which comes from infiltration from the surface. Engineers built a concrete drainage tunnel network inside the new compacted valley floor to channel water out and keep one of the biggest rubble deposits in the world stable. So you've got to control the water as it lands on this newly built valley when you finished it to make sure it doesn't transport the whole thing down there in a landslide and there's a disaster. You're right. As well as managing these massive challenges, Michael also needs to keep an eye on the tiny details. Did you have to move orchids here? Sure. So you had to... Specific little orchids and bats as well were in this your house. Correct. Wait a minute. You've got one team of engineers who are down there doing all the heroic tunnelling stuff and blasting rock and going where no person has ever gone before. And then all the ones up here, they're just like, oh, I don't want to do the gardening. Mm -hmm. I want to do the heroic underground stuff. Sure. Which would they rather be, down there or up there? Once a tunneler, always a tunneler. So really, yeah. they belong down there. It's gardening. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it really is a reminder coming out here, though, where you're doing this and why. Actually, the road's over there. Mm -hmm. So to free up and to avoid congestion in the beautiful Alps, you're all down there blasting and tunneling and working. And then up here, the spoil from that. You've got to be careful how you sculpt that into the landscape. In, in 10 years' time, it will look like just a natural valley. So it'll just disappear into the landscape. Exactly.